I'm out here right now at the property taking a walk this I'm not sure what this shiny thing is on my face I had to look it up I actually found it it's called the Sun <laughs> we're finally getting a sunny day here uh, it has been a very bad year for rain lots of uh, problems with mold and things having a lot of issues with that uh, it's been a bad year for rain just heard yesterday or I think it was a couple days ago now not yesterday a couple days ago that they said that we had something like 35 point something inches of rain this year so almost three feet of rain this summer and then the little computer guy you know the with the NOAA weather he says it's a uh, which is one point something inches above normal I thought yeah okay <laughs> above normal just slightly above normal I don't think three feet of rain is quote-unquote normal but uh, blame it on your SUV I guess or something global warming you know whatever <laughs> but uh, just wanted to do a quick video here on this got a letter um, one of my viewers is said I was a hypocrite because on one hand the gist of the letter I could read the whole letter but I'm not going to I won't say the name either because I don't I don't do that I respect privacy and all that but the gist of the letter was that I was wrong for condemning Eric John Phelps for saying let's join with the loss to fight the Jesuit takeover of America. And then I turned around and said, let's join the loss to fight Wolfton coming to this area and mining. Please get involved. Please call, you know, or write letters to the Land Use Planning Commission and whatever else. And they said, look at you, Brian, you're a hypocrite. Uh, that's so terrible. So. Phelps can't join with the Lost, but you'll join with the Lost over a political thing. Well, um, I'm not a hypocrite, okay? Um, what I am, I mean, I have been, I've done some dumb things in my life, and I know when I've messed up, but in this issue, I'm not a hypocrite. What I am is uh, someone that should have explained things a little bit better. I will take the guilt in that. I'm not always very clear with what I'm trying to say. So let me be clear about this. Um, let me be clear about the issue that's at stake here. Um, America is a nation that has turned its back on God. And America deserves God's judgment. The Bible talks about shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it. God will raise up somebody like Nebuchadnezzar to come in and take down the nation of Israel because they're wicked. Because they rejected him. Uh, they rejected God, and they're going and they're serving Baal and, and all the, you know, making the high places and the idols and everything else. So God says, okay, you want to reject me? Then I'll give you Nebuchadnezzar. He can come in and do some bad things to you. Um, I don't think anybody that's really saved would argue with the fact that America needs to be judged. And um, what I see from Eric John Phelps, what he speaks about is this pro baptical thing where he wants to have a Calvinistic... Baptist Protestant um, state, you know, the Declaration of Independence type of a thing. And I have listened to him off and on for years. So I do know what he stands for. I was, again, I was accused, you don't know what he stands for. Yes, I do. And he wants to have this separated state. Well, like I pointed out in my study, how are you going to have a separated state and have to deal with things like the electric power grid and fuel and groceries and, you know, clothing stores and whatever else? See, it's a, it's a weird sort of a thing where you can bring in this, this good government that you achieve it by working together with Catholics and Muslims and Buddhists and infidels of all sort. Um, no, I'm, a, I'm opposed to that. I am not opposed to fighting against tyranny. Again, that was put out. You, you're, you know, such a hypocrite. You're saying you're opposed to fighting against tyranny and yet you want to fight against Wolfton tyranny. How dare you, you hypocrite? Uh, no, I'm, I didn't say that I'm totally opposed to fighting against all tyranny. That's not true. Please don't lie about me. All right, uh, I am fighting against, I will fight against the political tyranny. I will do what I could, or can, excuse me. Um, if there was some way for me to run for political office, I would do it. I would love to be in some kind of a political office thing. Is that going to happen? Probably not. Uh, I really don't think that that's going to happen. I wish it could, but I really don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, you know, so I'm not opposed to taking, you know, political action and whatever else. I'm not. 
But what I'm saying is, what we need right now is for America to achieve that repentant state, for America to achieve a, a sorrow, godly sorrow that worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Second Corinthians chapter 7, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, not worldly sorrow, but godly sorrow. Uh, there's a big difference there. In order for that to happen, this nation to be, needs to be brought to its knees. This nation needs to, we need to see the cities burning. We need to see war and we need to see death and whatever else. And yes, the bad guys will be the orchestrators of that bad stuff. The Jesuits and whoever else. They will help to create those things. Oh, we shouldn't do that. We should just, you know, rely on God and whatever. God can use anybody. That was the point of my study. But now let's get on to this thing of the Wolfton issue. What is Wolfton trying to do? Wolfton is not trying to come and punish the evil. Wolfton, on the other hand, is trying to come and destroy what God created. A beautiful area, one of the few untouched areas of America, North America. Um, we have the what's called dark sky nights around here because there's not that many, that much light pollution from cities. And so you can actually see most of the host of heaven. It's beautiful. And I'm going to lose that. All the people in the area, we will lose that. If Wolfton gets their way, they'll be just to the north of us. A number of miles that way. I'll be hearing the explosions going off and whatever. And they'll be destroying a natural habitat. See, it's a totally different thing. If you can't see that, I'm sorry. You're very blind. Um, I'm trying to defend what God has made. God's creation. Nature. Phelps is trying to defend what man has created. Not defend it, but saying we should bring it down the right way and we have to fight the alt-right and we can't allow this and we can't allow that. Well, I don't agree with that. Um, this nation needs some purging. This nation needs to see some uh, young people sent off to war and they, they don't return. And those parents need to start thinking about getting down on their knees and crying out to God and saying, oh God, please forgive us. See, if I get my way, so to speak, my prayers are answered, and God's judgment comes and God uses the wicked to judge the cities and all the other evil areas of this nation, um, it could lead to repentance. If, however, Wolfton gets their way, and this, they do this mining thing, is it going to lead anybody to repentance? No. You know, out here we have beautiful little birds, birds that I, I don't even know what they are, and I have to look them up and, well, a warbler or, or some kind of a thing, or a uh, scarlet tanager. I saw one the one time in the area here, bluebirds and things. What happens if they have a toxic mine coming to the area? Oh, sorry about that, they're poisoned. Native brook trout, streams up there, where you go out and you can see how God designed things and how God created things. The beauty of nature. A lot of the birds, they get away from the cities because the cities have so much electrical pollution that it kills them. And all the other pollution as well. So there aren't that many real wild areas. And that's one of the reasons we moved here. So we could be closer to what God created and, and praise God for what He created. It isn't some kind of thing of, uh, I'm some new agey guy and, oh, I just have to be out here to get in touch with nature or something. That's not it. I want to be out here to praise the Lord for what He has made. And to thank him for the beauty of his creation. But if Wolfton gets their way, then it's going to be one more area that's polluted. Oh, hey, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, we had a little spill there. And, and uh, I mean, one of their chemicals that they will be using with the, to get the metal stripped out of the, the ore, the rocks and things, will be arsenic. Arsenic. And then, oh, we have all this toxic chemical stuff. Now we have to do something with it. Oh, we'll make a tailings facility. So the tailings, the, the sludge that's left over from this toxic waste. Oh, we're just going to find some place uh, in the area, you know, we'll stick it there. Hopefully it won't do anything. You know, hopefully it won't, uh, you know, corrupt the aquifer in the area. You know, so, uh, yes, it's a big difference. It's between what God has made and what man has made. I pray for the judgment of God to fall upon what man has made. And of course, you know, oh, there'll be some nature that gets hurt too if, if there's civil war. I get that. But we're talking about a little tiny bit of a sideline thing, not just direct attack on nature, like what this greedy company wants to do by coming to this area. And this whole thing of Wolfton coming, I need to point out too, if you aren't aware of this, they already tried it. Getty Oil, I think it was, tried it back in the 1970s. They wanted to mine the exact same area, Pickett Mountain. 
And they, they did the study and they said there's not enough there. It's not worth it. But see, Wolfton, being a fly-by-night company that does things cheap as chips, according to their president and CEO, we can do it cheap as chips or quick and dirty. They want to get in here and just rip the area up, make all kinds of problems, and then just say, oops, sorry, toxic spills. Hey, you know, we'll have an insurance policy to cover that. Don't worry about it. We'll get it cleaned up eventually. And then we see all the animals dying in the area because we already have that happening in this area, which is disgusting. We have Irving, big logging company, and they spray glyphosate after they log, killing off all the red raspberries because the, the deer come in and eat the young trees that they try to plant and whatever, and the deer are just so terrible. And so a lot of areas, there's very few white-tailed deer. Very few. It's terrible. It's a horrible thing. So to the one who wrote me the uh, letter, you know who you are, um, Hopefully you understand now a little bit better why I'm taking this stand. Um, I want to see people brought to repentance. That's what I want. I want to see God use anybody. Somebody step up to the plate here, you know, okay? Uh, I don't care, Jesuits or Freemasons or whoever. Some servants of the devil that will have the guts enough to come out and carry out the judgment of God upon the wicked people of this nation. Let it happen so that the people that are left behind the people that are not killed in that will come to a place of repentance again i've told this story many times robert sayers sheffy a methodist circuit riding evangelist and the best time of his ministry years was during the civil war and he said how many times how many times i wonder if my dog's out there I just heard somebody slow down but hopefully he's not out there uh but how many times there were families following the trailers, the, the wagons that they were pulling, all these dead bodies stacked up like cordwood. And the families following behind it. And Robert Sheffy would go and he'd follow along and he'd say, can I pray for you, brother or sister? Can I pray for you? Can I talk to you about salvation? Can I talk to you about God? And they were open to it. That's what I want. All right? Well, big trucks coming back and forth with mining stuff and whatever and going up there with loads of dynamite and whatever else. They aren't going to care one bit about salvation. All right? So, um, you know, I'm open to rebuke, brethren. I'm open to people saying, you know, brother, you're wrong on this. What? Fine. That's fine. But uh, just, you know, remember, I'm in ministry, okay? I'm not some dumb bunny that doesn't understand issues, and you can just write to me and just rebuke me and rip me up and down and whatever else. Um, and you don't need to apologize. You don't need to write a letter back. I'm really sorry. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But uh, just get a little bit perturbed sometimes with people. We need to see the judgment of God on this nation. But uh, we cannot be for the complete just destruction of the natural areas that are still left in this country. And I will defend those natural areas. So uh, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.